Hello and welcome to another Coding Secrets. In this episode, I'll be explaining how the Sonic 3D bonus stages were coded. First, let's strip away everything except for the background. So it looks a little like the 3D floor from the moose chase in Mickey Mania, but it's only scaled vertically, not horizontally. So let's have a look at how we achieved that. The background is made of a repeating strip like this. Now normally we'd mirror something like this to save memory, and although it doesn't look like it, we have actually mirrored this. If we slide it down, we can see that it is mirrored, and the artist was just very clever about the repeating pattern to hide the mirroring. So how do we achieve the 3D effect of it seeming to curve into the distance? Well, if we compare the original texture and the 3D section, we can see that this 3D section isn't as tall. That's because we use something called horizontal interrupts to just copy certain horizontal lines from the original texture to the screen. For example, if we skipped every other line copying the texture to the screen, the image would end up being smaller, half the height. So we carefully calculate which lines to skip as we move down the original texture to enable us to create a kind of 3D curve to the screen. So that's the background, but what about the fully 3D path that Sonic runs down? Well, there's a big clue to how we create this effect if we isolate this wooden panel that Sonic would normally jump up. We can see that it's very like a scaling textured polygon, but in fact it's just animation frames stored in memory. And we've mirrored it both horizontally and vertically, which means when compressed it takes less than 15k of memory. So that explains the wooden panel Sonic jumps up, but what about the path? How does that all link in? Well, let's just take a few pixels from a few different frames of the panel animation as it scales up. We can then use horizontal interrupts again to position each of these slices exactly where we want them on the screen. And if we're clever about positioning them, we can produce a tilted polygon. So then we do a bunch of maths to work out where all the individual lines should be on the screen, and then use the horizontal interrupts to create the 3D path. There is only ever one slice of the animated texture on any given horizontal line, and the 3D effect is entirely created by just choosing the right slice for each line. And as all the animation frames can be stored in video memory at once, because they're so small, it's incredibly quick to draw them. We also pick the right camera angle, so that for the most part, the path disappears off the top and the bottom of the screen. This limits the number of different sizes that we need to store animation frames for. So what about all the other things? Well, we use the sonic animations from the main game, and the rings and the spike balls are scaled by using animation frames for each size. And there you go. No sneaky palette swaps this time, except between levels to make the background suit the stage they belong to. And that's all there is to it. Please like or subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and let me know in the comments what other secrets you'd like explaining. Until next time, take care.